Sulfur, separation, solve. When moving from the bottom upwards, a certain revelation arises, a wisdom of the ages. It reveals itself in the hermit, it sits in the heart of the thinker, and is a common necessity for introspection. What might it be that so graciously enwraps a person? The answer is seclusion, time apart. We may say, a meditative reflection on the day-to-day, -day, wherein we employ the mind's desire to understand, to categorize, and take hold of the little things. Such a simple space, but oh so great an assistant to our personal progress. Let's turn to an analogy. When we engage in distillation of plant material, a few things are necessary. One is the seclusion of the plant's form. Then a soft heat is applied in the form of steam, which raises the existent liquids from the material into an antechamber. The segments are identified. The choices from there, we might say the wheat is separated from the chaff in the antechamber, both figuratively and literally. In short, the plant matter is you, the physical aspects of your existence. The subtle heat of the steam is the applied contemplation that arouses all manner of thoughts into the antechamber of your mind. It lifts them above and with scrutiny categorizes them by their natures. One is a concentrated subject, the other loose. One is in short supply, the other more plentiful. One is worthwhile, and the remainder is rose water. The process also demonstrates the experience of man as a condensed spiritual form, enwrapped in lesser fluids of greater mass, enwrapped further in lesser form being the physical matter of even greater mass. Anyways, this distillation is the process of understanding, and to grasp such we need to begin an analysis of ourselves in terms of awareness, of what is us and not, or what is relevant and irrelevant. First, let's explain understanding. It is the application of our own faculties, the usage of the mind to identify, to reason, to judge, weigh, measure, and to attempt noting causes and effects. In short, understanding is the capability to witness distinctions. Two things are necessary for simple understanding. Three are necessary for complex understanding. Simple understanding is the minor distinction of you and not you, this and that, is and is not, etc. Complex understanding, however, takes into account interaction. The third item of distinction is time, or we may say the experience of events that are now weighed and noted against each other, which is where causes and effects are finally witnessed the birthplace of time, the house of interaction. Coincidentally, this is one reason why in the Kabbalah you find the father and mother, being Abba and Ima, to reside within the second and third sphere. Ima, the mother, also known as understanding, is the first form of distinction. As it says of anything higher, there is no separation in them and therefore there is little room for self-awareness. Thus the procession of time is moot, referencing apples from the orchard. I suspect some of you are asking why this is important, so let's take a look at the concept of separation. When we as a self-aware entity, who holds understanding, applies the ability onto a certain subject of interest, we begin to identify the internal items. Sure, all the items identified are simply parts, components of the whole, 
but in the parts are the essence. We might say the alchemical idea of understanding is one that works from the complex to the simple, from the congealed mass back into the prime, from the lower to the higher, result to the origin, or as the Kabbalists might see it working from the aspects of the left into the right. This is also why the Hermeticists call, you might say, the grand conceptions, the cause of causes. Same to the Kabbalists. Now, this operation has a name, which is Solve. On one level, the process of Solve is the perfection of an item, a return to its roots, if you will. In the first video, this was described as the burning away of impurities in metals, taking them from their gross form into their beautified form with an applied change. However, this process actually describes beautifying the lower form to make it more ready for this particular ascension process. The idea goes like so. When we are tempered, when we are tried, when our superfluities are burnt up and beauty arises, we elevate above the dross. We are separated from the mundane things and brought up into greater purity. The human experience is gifted self-awareness of greater lengths at this point until it reaches the breaking point, which is unity above and below, unity of all things, which we call Atziluth. On an occult level, this is the swallowing of the Klepothic vessels. I presuppose you've never heard of this before, so I'll explain it. The Klepot, the husk, typically noted as the evil aspects, shadows, improper conceptions, are rooted in Geburah, the consuming fire. When they are raised by loving kindness, by Chesed, they are swallowed by the consuming fire, hence the usage of the word consuming, mitigated by mercy. In their elevation they are no more. They are transmuted out of the impurity, accepted by the aspects of the right. This process is the elevation of the animal and man. It is the reshaping of himself into the stone of philosophy. He receives immortality because he is in Bina, the space of permanence, the aspect of understanding. While you may have not picked up on it, this, being the beginning and final stage of self-awareness, is the end of the Tao that can be known. Everything beyond in unity is indistinguishable and is therefore called Ain, nothingness, which is why it says there is a Tao that cannot be known, the eternal Tao, quoting the first lines of the Tao Te Ching. Thus it is here, the stone of the philosopher. So, to the common alchemist, we might question, what does sulfur have to do with this? What is the major active agent of all these things we've covered, I'd say? You, as in you are firstly, but is it not obvious? The brain, sulfur, the principle of dissolution and separation, is the mind. More rightly, consciousness. It is liminal between form and unform. It is the mediator between all things we actively engage with. It is the nature of Ima reflected into man himself. Understanding receives from above and below. It receives from supernal wisdom and from the lower via the obvious items, the senses. Man's nature is one of interaction, rather reception. He takes in and gives out. His entire life is a beating heart of fluctuation, compression, expansion. At the core is the base of I am, and in this base we move on. We move up. We give up the guff, give up loss. And therein is the last frontier, which is truth. So now we can tackle the subject in whole. The mind, noting interaction in life, discovered, rather formed, morality. It witnessed the interrelated effects and various causes, some accepted, others rejected, but ultimately it found a means to admit certain actions as beneficial to 
while to life itself. The extension of its imperfection was one that it admitted arousal of divine spirit in the heart and culminated as the pursuit, the way, the journey, albeit traveled by the fool, who walked haphazardly among the unknown, ever seeking a freedom that existed right before him. Thus he, the human being, was no longer an animal, no longer form, and spiritual insight traveled the energetic lattice of reality. It permeated everything, an undying virus to the animal, but it is the elixir of life to mankind. As always, a massive thank you to my patrons and supporters. I appreciate you more than you know.